How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. I'm David Clark. This is my old sled, and today I'm going to be responding to a question from Corey Whitehead. So Corey sent me a post recently. He said, uh, I noticed in most of your videos you appear to be alone. Do you ride alone quite often? I'm new to my area, so I don't know any other riders yet, and I keep reading you really shouldn't ride alone. Now, Corey, great question. I can totally relate to this one uh, because, yes, I do actually ride alone quite a bit. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So, uh, you know, part of that is just necessity. I mean, I don't have a lot of friends that ride, so if I want to ride, I'm riding by myself. Part of that's also my personality, right? Like I've always been a bit of a loner. You know, ever since I was a kid, I was always playing with myself, by myself, playing by myself. Um, so I am somebody that kind of enjoys my own company. I don't mind doing things by myself, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Snowmobiling is something that you should always have somebody with you when you ride. Scuba diving is the same kind of thing. You know, if you get into any trouble out there, you've only got yourself to rely on. But to your point, Corey, sometimes you just don't have a choice. So in this video, I'm gonna cover my top 10 tips for riding alone. So my first tip, whenever I'm out on my own, I always carry a mobile device and I make sure that it's charged and I carry a battery backup so that I can call for help if I do get into trouble. But you gotta remember a lot of the areas where you snowmobile, you just may not have cell signal. One thing that I've found when I've been out in really low temperatures is that the battery on my cell phone doesn't last as long. So it's a good idea to carry one of these external power supplies. You can plug your phone into it when it gets low. Next tip, whenever you can, travel on an established, well-traveled trail and stick to the trail. Then if you do get into trouble, eventually somebody's gonna come along. Next tip is just like filing a flight plan, you want to tell somebody where you're going to go and it's not a bad idea to check in with them when you get there. Next up, now people are going to be expecting you to be in a certain place, so make sure that you don't deviate from your path. So if you're driving along, you're heading for your destination and you see a little side trail and you think, oh, I'm just going to head down there a little ways, well, five minutes down that road, you could get into trouble and then if people are out looking for you later, they're not going to be able to find you. Now, because you're going to be alone if you get into trouble, you really want to minimize the likelihood that you're going to get into trouble. So just like you always do when you're riding alone, it's really important to take the time to check your machine over thoroughly front to back before you head out on the trail. So if you're out snowmobiling, a lot of times you can't just pull over for gas. So a related tip when you're checking your machine over, make sure you've got enough fuel and oil to get to your destination. Something that's really important when you're traveling by yourself is the distance that you travel because there's always going to be sort of that point of no return, right? Where it's now closer to your destination than it is to get home. And if you break down right in the middle, are you going to be able to get to one of those two points by the time it gets dark, right? So you got to remember your average untrained hiker can do, you know, what, maybe six or seven miles in a couple of hours, right? So you got to make sure you've got enough time to do that before dark. The other thing to remember is that when you're out snowmobiling, your snowmobile gear and your boots, these snowmobile boots are not meant for walking, right? They're meant for snowmobiling. So you're going to get tired a lot faster when you're trekking through the snow. All right, now if you get into trouble when you're out riding by yourself, you're going to have to be self-sufficient. So you might want to carry some stuff on your sled with that in mind. So things like a first aid kit, something to make fire. Um, I have done a couple of videos on what to carry on your sled. You might want to check those out. I'll put a link to them in the description for this one. So if things go sideways for you when you're out on the trail by yourself, particularly if you're outside of cell phone coverage, uh, then packing a personal locating device like a Spot or this McMurdo Fast Find Ranger really could save your life. Now along with that, make sure that you're wearing the right gear and you're dressed warm enough for the conditions. Because if your machine breaks down, you can't just jump on your buddy's sled. And exposure can be really serious. All right, my next tip is probably, well, actually a lot of these are best practice for snowmobiling in general, whether you're by yourself or not. Uh, and that's to be familiar with the area that you're going to be riding in. So you might want to get yourself, you know, a copy of track maps uh, for snowmobilers or get yourself a copy of the local trail maps, just so that if you do break down somewhere along the route, you know which way is the closest route to go to get yourself to help or shelter. All right, the other thing you really want to do is ride within your skill level and within the limitations of your machine. So eventually you're going to get bored with running trails and running roads and you're going to want to get into a little bit deeper snow. But if you've got a trail sled and this is your first season, you probably want to wait until you got a bunny along before you try it. All right, guys, that's it. That's my 10 tips for riding alone. Now, obviously, snowmobiling is something you really shouldn't do alone, but just sometimes you're just going to have to do it. So actually, another kind of a bonus tip for you, if you do find that you're riding alone and you don't really want to, hook up with one of your local clubs. You'll find lots of great guys to ride with. So that's it for me, but now it's over to you. Is there anything that I missed, right? If you've got any of your own tips for riding alone, post something in the comments below and let us know. So I hope you liked that video. If you did, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. Until next time, I'm Dave Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Because if your machine breaks down, you kiss. <laughs> because if your sled breaks down, you kiss, just can't jump. 
All right, next, just like if you're flying and you're flying, because you got to remember, if you get into trouble, you're going to have to be self spit because it's cold. Yeah.